CEO, former White House Press Secretary, Trump campaign insider Hogan Gidley with us now. Hogan, always good to see you. Thank you. Uh, all right. No one can, no one ever would say, you know, gee, I'd love to be indicted on a Thursday morning. Uh, uh, we can agree on that. That said, it seems to be working out pretty well for the president. What is his plan through the weekend, Monday, and then into Tuesday, especially after he leaves the courthouse? Well, I've not talked to the team about this or, or what they plan to do over the next several days. I can tell you, though, that uh, he can weaponize this in two ways. And you hit on one of them playing the clip from Mike Pence there. Donald Trump can say he's the victim of a weaponized, uh, politicized system that goes after him consistently, whether it was Russia, uh, Mueller, uh, indictments, uh, uh, impeachments one and two, uh, all the ways they continue to go after him, staff, uh, family members, businesses, but he can also turn around and then say, as he did in his statement, but if you put me back in office, I'm going to clean house. I'm going to make sure that there is no longer a dual system of justice that protects the elites and goes after the rest of us. If he plays it that way and focuses on not just himself, but the American people and the America first movement, I think he's going to be in good shape here politically. You make a great point. If if he focuses on everybody else, not just himself, which at times has been difficult for him uh, to do. Long list of grievances was also in that statement. You've been in these planning discussions. And there's probably nobody who has been a better showman uh, or user of the Oval Office and then the media spotlight that follows, uh, either as he was candidate, president, or now a former president than Donald Trump. What, what's the conversation like right now about what happens after Tuesday? Is it, do we go have a rally? Is it, does he have a press conference? Does he go back and come down the golden escalator again? Take us through that conversation. Well, I do think they're talking about how they can use this to their advantage. I focused on two ways. I'm sure Donald Trump can come up with more. You pointed it out. He is the ultimate consummate showman, but he also knows how to work the crowd. He knows how to get people on his side. You see that with massive fundraising numbers too. But from a political standpoint, understand Donald Trump spiked above 50% in popularity last year in August. Remember what happened in August? It was the Mar-a-Lago raid. The same thing I think politically applies here, and that is when the American people feel as though someone is being attacked unjustly, they will rally around that person. 62% of Americans right now believe that this is a politically motivated attack on Donald Trump. That includes 70% of independents. So despite the fact that the mainstream media continues mm. to say, this is all legitimate, Alvin Bragg is the champion of champions. He is our hero. He is doing this just for the, for the goodness of the legal system. The American people aren't buying it because they've seen this play out too many times at this point, and they're not going to listen to those crying wolf. At some level, I never cease to marvel, uh, just as an observer, at the way Donald Trump has flipped everything we know about politics on its head. Somehow, he has gotten indicted, and in the end, it helps him and hurts the rest of the people who is running against him for the 2024 nomination. It defies everything we know about politics. Yeah. Th that but that hey, said... That said, you know, this means that over the next 18 months, the word Stormy Daniels is going to keep coming up over and over and over again. That may play very well, as you have laid out, with Republican primary voters. And this is what Democrats hope, right? But that when it comes to the general election, pictures of Stormy Daniels and the trial about Stormy Daniels just does not sit well with suburban housewives in Ohio and in Michigan and in Georgia. Well, a couple things. First of all, Alvin Bragg, an indictment's different than a conviction, right? We're, we're way far off from that. But Bragg is going to get everything he wants out of this. He's going to be the toast of the town. He's going to be the hero. Big bad Bob Mueller couldn't do it. Speaker Pelosi couldn't do it. She tried twice. And all of a sudden, this ragtag DA from the borough of Manhattan, he's the one who got Donald Trump to get a mug shot. He's the one who got Donald Trump uh, to receive an indictment. So he's going to get everything he wants. He knows this case from what, we heard, what we've heard so far isn't probably going anywhere mm -hmm. from a legal standpoint. And I know attorney, but I listen to the experts. Jonathan Turley called this legally pathetic. Um, Alan Dershowitz said a first year law student could defend Donald Trump in this one. So the legal experts all agree from the right, from the left and from the center. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.